Uh, okay. Good day, everyone. Today I'll be, pre be presenting my research on preserving Ukushamba Drakensberg Bushman heritage. If I were to ask you what form of entertainment you think is the most effective at storytelling, what would you answer and why? Does it engage audiences the most or is it the most fun? My answer to the first question would be video games because they are fun, challenging and, crucially, you actually do something. In other words, what sets video games apart from other forms of media is that they allow players to actually interact with the content rather than just experiencing it. Video games are a cultural phenomenon that have swept across the globe and have arguably grown greater than industries such as film and television. Much of this is due to the expansion of mobile gaming and esports, and I believe that this can be leveraged by archaeological and heritage efforts to sustainably preserve cultural and traditional data. Choosing the heritage that I wanted to represent in my video game was one of the easier tasks of my research. I had previously done research on the folklore of the Ukashamba Drakensberg Bushman and was therefore aware of the wealth of interesting stories in the oral tradition associated with it. I believe that there's that the traditions of the Ukashamba Drakensberg Bushman are ideally suited for adaptation into a video game. As the in situ rock art sites of the Ukashamba Drakensberg are still exposed to the elements, the preservation of the rock art tradition through other media <coughs> is therefore essential. I chose to immerse myself in the process of developing a simple video game in order to preserve Ukashamba Drakensberg Bushman heritage for three important reasons. Firstly, doing so would preserve the represented heritage in what I would argue to be a sustainable medium, since video gaming is a relatively new art form and it is still growing. Secondly, it has been established in the literature that video games encourage a high level of engagement due to the fact that they allow players to interact with content rather than just observe it. Lastly, with the size and increasing growth of the video gaming phenomenon, preserving and broadcasting heritage using video games will allow the heritage to reach new and bigger audiences. To develop a video game, I decided to use Unity Game Engine. Game engines are software packages that greatly streamline the process of developing video games. Using Unity to develop my video game required me to learn about using its core features. Most important were the animation-related features and coding using Unity's chosen coding language, c -sharp. My research had three areas. The, the second was to develop a tangible example of how heritage can be preserved as a video game, or, in other words, making heritage preservation the core focus. The last was to ensure that the manner in which the Ukashamba Jarkinsburg Bushman traditions are represented would be as authentic as possible to those traditions. I used a survey questionnaire in order to identify what samples of players thought would be interesting about the intersection of video games and heritage and what they thought should be included in my video game. The questions focused on various themes, from South African heritage to players' choices of video games, including heritage, opinions on serious games, and feedback on a proposed video game. From this survey, I determined that I would need to focus my efforts on developing one of two parts of a video game. This was a 2D part that roughly describes what the video game I am. The questionnaire indicated two important points. First, secondly, uh, Tim, on um, unfortunately, there's a bit of lag there. The survey is established. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh dear. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> Yep, yeah, sorry, um, I think um, the connection wasn't very good and there was a bit of lag. Um, yeah, um, so we could just start from the questionnaire results again. Okay. Right. Sorry about that. Thank you. No problem. Good to go now. Yeah, from the survey, I determined that I would need to focus my efforts on developing one of two parts of a, of a proposed video game. This was a 2D part that roughly describes the video game that I am developing. The questionnaire indicated two important points. Firstly, the participants were receptive of the idea of a 2D video game that uses the rock art of the Ukasamba Drakensberg as the art style. Secondly, the survey established that a traditional Bushman story would be well suited as a narrative for such a video game. The results of the survey is in accordance with some trends that we can see in the video game industry, where folklore, mythology, and artistic traditions are used to develop interesting content for video games. My research used two important aspects of Bushman heritage in order to develop it. The first was the rock art tradition of the Ukaslamba Drakensberg Bushman, and the second was an associated bit of folklore. For the rock art, I decided to focus on game Pa Shelter, Kumberg, in the Ukaslamba Drakensberg because of the site's importance for interpreting the meaning of the regional rock art. The Rosetta Stone of Southern African rock art is located there and has been interpreted as depicting an important Ukaslamba Drakensberg ritual. This ritual involves the transfer of spiritual power of an Eland to a Bushman shaman. Alongside the depiction of this ritual, the rock art at the site also shows scenes where Bushmen are hunting Eland. Hunting was crucial to the Bushman way of life. I use concepts from the associated folklore to contextualize what is depicted in a game bar shelter. <coughs> Most important was the spoiling of the Eland story. The spoiling of the Eland is a creation story from the Ukathamba Drakensberg. Specifically, it focuses on the creation of Eland. The closing sentences of this story indicate that its purpose was to explain why was the work of Bushmen men to hunt, and especially to hunt Eland. To summarize the story, it begins at the primordial time of creation. Here, the creator god, the mantis, is creating and naming some natural features, tools, and certain animals. A baby Eland is born as a result of a misdeed of his wife, and the mantis decides to foster the child. It grows, but unfortunately, it is killed by the mantis's youngest son, while the mantis is out on an errand. The mantis is furious about this, and after some comical punishments, such as pulling off his son's nose and throwing it into a fire, they try to recreate the Eland. This they do by collecting the dead Eland's blood and churning it in a pot. This failed, but after they add the fat from the Eland's heart to the mix, they succeed. But the recreated Elant are not the same. By killing the first Elant, before it was ready for the use of men, the mantis's son spoiled or somehow blemished the Elant. This act makes future Elant flee humans and even behave aggressively towards them. The story ends with the mantis, his two sons, and his two sons hunting the Elant, with the youngest son struggling the most. The central story is, however, not the only Bushman folklore represented in the video game, as there are associated bits of folklore found outside it that are immediately relevant. These pieces of Bushman folklore concern the relationship between the Mantis and Elant, as well as why Elant are so difficult to hunt. I selected these additional pieces of Bushman folklore because they are 
relevant to the story. Most prominent was folklore that said the mantis was with Elant, in their bones, or between their horns. This is indicated in the folklore as being some kind of protective boon that Elant possessed in order to help evade hunters. Similarly, I also drew on the broader rock art tradition of the Ukai Samba Drakensberg to contextualize the rock art at Game Power Shelter. For example, Artebiest, partridges, and the striped mouse are not represented at Game Power Shelter. Most birds in the rock art tradition are represented as a kind of generic fowl image, and mice do not seem to be represented at all. I also plan to use some entoptic imagery to create more movements in the video game, as well as in some UI or mechanics. <coughs> My video game's narrative is divided into three acts, with the first and last representing the contents in the Rosetta Stone of Southern African rock art, and the second representing the spoiling of the Elant story. I have some knowledge of oral traditions, how traditions within, how stories within them are structured, and then mnemonic techniques. I also found it useful to structure the narrative of my video game as if the individual scenes in the story are lines in the stanza of a poem. Although players of the video game will not be aware of this, the purpose of this narrative design was done in an attempt to adhere to an authentic adaptation to the oral tradition of the Ukaslamba Jarkensburg Bushman and oral tradition and oral traditions in general. Oral traditions typically have a repeated or very similar line at the beginning and end of a chunk of narrative. This encloses the chunk in a unique and easy to remember way. In oral traditions, mnemonic techniques helped storytellers to keep track of where they were in the narrative. It also helped them, it also allowed them some flexibility in expanding on a rough skeleton of a story. It could also help listeners to keep track of events in the story, if only on a passive level, and contribute to feelings such as anticip anticipation and foreshadowing. The, the mnemonic techniques of oral traditions were much more useful to larger narratives, such as Homer's The Iliad, but using these techniques for brief stories would have been useful as well. <coughs> the repeated contents in my video game serves passive mnemonic purposes. These focus on gradually teaching players about the video game mechanics and rules. Represented as a rhyme scheme, the narrative parts of the video game follow an A, B, C, D, C, D, B, A format. It has two scenes, with the first representing the Rosetta Stone of Southern African rock art, and the second a hunting scene. The second act contains four scenes, which are identified in the traditional story. These scenes represent creation events, C, and hunting events, D. The order of the scenes is swapped. The order of the scenes in Act One is swapped in Act Three, ending the video game with the first scene in Act One. This narrative structure is, def is designed to reflect oral traditions of storytelling, with the goal of ensuring that content is remembered. I focused on repetition and repeated con variations on repeated content. <coughs> This narrative, structure is this, this narrative structure is designed to reflect oral traditions of storytelling with the goal of ensuring that content is remembered. The first act serves to introduce the player to the ritual depicted in the Rosetta Stone, as well as the art style and mechanics of the video game. The second act contextualizes the importance of Elant and hunting to the Ukasamba Jarkensburg Bushman. It also explains the cause of the relationship between Bush, Bushman and the Eland. The last act returns the player to the content represented in Act 1, but with an understanding of what is being represented. The primary playable content in my video game are variations on hunting scenes and linking segments of gameplay that progress the overall narrative.
a story scene is followed by a hunting scene, which is followed by a story scene, and so on until the very last story scene. The two types of gameplay in my video game are story scenes and hunting scenes. These have different mechanics governing them. In story scenes, all player characters have an ability key and an interaction key. Player characters' abilities vary depending on which act the scene, the scene is, and all story scene player characters are able to interact with specific objects using the interaction mechanic. This is the primary way in which the narrative progresses in the story scenes. In the story scenes of Acts 1 and 3, the player character is a Bushman shaman. His ability is to dance in order to enter a trance state. This dance is related to the, the ritual depicted in the Rosetta Stone at Game Park Shelter. In Act 2, the player character is the Mantis God from the spoiling of the Elot. His ability is to create various things. Such things include traps and snares and certain animals. Depending on scope constraints later in development, this array of creations might be expanded to include such things as the wind, mountains, and celestial bodies. In the hunting scenes, the player characters do not have an action or interaction mechanic, but combat-related ones. These include a ranged attack, a melee attack, and a special ability. Elant behavior depends on which hunting scene they are found in, as defined by their being parts of Act 1 and 3, or Act 2. The key differences in individual hunting scenes are the weapons the playable hunter characters use, some mechanics for bigger hunting scenes, and where the elants have been spoiled in the narrative. Spoiled elant flee hunters and behave aggressively under certain conditions. <coughs> there were three big tasks that I needed to complete for the development of my video game. The first was the design of the video game narrative, and the, sec the second was the development of the elant AI, and the third was animating all of the characters. The design of the video game turned out to be the easiest of these three tasks, as the possibilities were constrained by the rock art at Game Park Shelter and the spoiling of the Elan story. The rock art constrained the thematic content of the video game to hunting and the depicted ritual. This I expanded in order to depict the story of the spoiling of the Elan. The fact the fact that the rock art shows hunting scenes actually turned out to be quite beneficial, as players tend to enjoy combat mechanics more than others. The spoiling of the Elan story gave me a general plot around which to structure the video game's narrative. This is depicted as closely as possible in the video game's narrative, as it is found in Act 2. The video game narrative was expanded with the goals of having a two-way relationship between the spoiling of the Elan story and the rock art game Par Shelter. Taking the ritual depicted in the rock art as the starting point, I, I attempt to contextualize this ritual with a traditional story. In other words, I show players the ritual and the Bushmen beliefs associated with it, and then show them the origin or reason behind those beliefs using the traditional story. After this, I return the player to the ritual scene with a better understanding of its content. The development of the Elant AI turned out to be beyond my current abilities to code. <clears throat> Luckily, I know someone who was able to help me. The main goal of the Elant AI was to imitate grazing animal behavior. This includes states in which Elant idle and graze, flee, are aggressive, and cluster. For the most part, these states are defined by distance checks to hunters and other elant. The animations turned out to be far more time consuming than I initially thought, especially with the elant. The movement patterns of antelope turn out to be quite difficult to convincingly pull off. In order to animate the characters in my video game, I took photographs of the rock art at Game Park Shelter. I edited them then in Autodesk Sketchbook 
to look brand new. I then rigged the edited images to virtual bones using Anima 2D in Unity and animated them using Unity's animation features. This allowed me to animate the 2D images in a similar manner as 3D animation with bones, inverse kinematics, and keying of virtual objects' positions and orientations. This research and the consequent video game aim to preserve Ukaithlamba Jokensburg Bushman traditions in a tangible form of entertainment, one that encourages deeper engagement with that heritage. Doing so involved a challenging research and development process, but I'm confident that my video game will contribute to the preservation of the Ukaithlamba Jokensburg Bushman heritage, as well as provide an interesting and an enjoyable experience to players around the world. Brilliant. Thanks very much.